right? So we, we, we spent some time drawing the aggregate supply curve like this, right? So we said, and this sometimes is called also the classical section of the aggregate supply curve. However, what we did was this. We took this intermediate section right here, right? And we said, ordinarily, when we draw the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model, we don't include the Keynesian and classical sections, right? Ordinarily, what we do is we take the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model, right? And we go over here and we're drawing the same thing again. We're drawing price level, right? We're drawing output or real GDP. Right, real GDP. Right, I'll put a real GDP. And we're taking this section here, and we're bringing this section here, and we're doing that, and we're calling that aggregate supply. And what that is is this. What that is is this. Now, we also said this, that that aggregate supply there, that shows us how much output there would be at every level of price. Right? And as price goes up, there's more, more output. Right? And as output goes up, it requires a higher price, correct? Right? So we took that and we put it over there. But we also said this, that that upward sloping aggregate supply curve, as illustrated there, is the short run aggregate supply. So let's do this. Let's say, OK, this is short run aggregate supply. Now, here is a question. What makes the short run the short run in macroeconomics? Now, you know what makes it in microeconomics. Well, maybe you don't. But we'll, 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 let's do this first. What makes the short run the short run in microeconomics? In the short run, in microeconomics, capital is fixed. Capital is fixed right? In macroeconomics, what's fixed? Something else. Not capital. Price. Not price. No? What? Output. Not output. You know, we're not even close. <laughs> we're not even warm, right? We're not even warm. In the short run, in macroeconomics, nominal wages are fixed. Nominal wages are fixed. Right? Now, nominal wages are just the wage that you get, right? So in the short run, your wages are fixed. In the long run, nominal wages are very right? Now, okay. <coughs> now, so we have this short run aggregate supply curve. We say in the short run, nominal wages are fixed, right? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah. Right? Nominal wages are fixed in the short run. Um, in, in, in the long run, nominal wages are varied, right? So prices change and wages lag behind that. Right? Wages lag behind that. That, that, that. That's what we argue, um, you know, occurs. So um, this, this is why the aggregate supply curve slows up like this in the short run. Now in the long run, we said, <coughs> nominal wages are variable, right? So the long run aggregate supply curve is equal to the level of output that's equal to full employment or the natural rate. Right. Now, is this beginning to look at any level familiar to you? Right. Beginning to look at any level familiar to you? Okay. Right. Now, so we said we have the short run aggregate supply curve. We've got the long run aggregate supply curve. That means what we argue is in the long run, the level of output in the economy will return to a level of output that is equal to what's necessary to fully employ, employ all, resources, or all resources. So in the long run, right, the macro economy is going to return to full employment. Now that's that's actually kind of um, you know kind of a classical notion. You know the classical notion is the economy will self-correct, right? 
Well, you know, eventually we got to the point where we said yes. We kind of agree with that. In the long run, the economy will self-correct, right? In the long run, you know, nominal wages will adjust, and if nominal wages adjust, then um, the result is going to be, um, you know, firms are going to make, you know, change production levels, and this is going to result in, in less or more output, and eventually we're going to get to the full employment level of GDP. Now, okay. So we've got short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, and then we have aggregate demand. Now, if you are asked, if you are asked to illustrate the economy in long run equilibrium, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Now, it took us weeks and weeks and weeks to get to this illustration. Right? It took us weeks and weeks and weeks to get to this illustration. We said, okay, you know, I mean, we've got short-run aggregate supply, long-run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand. And we say, in, at long-run equilibrium, the economy can be at any price level, but the output short-run aggregate supply and, 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 and aggregate demand will be equal at the, the full employment level of GDP. So what makes this long-run equilibrium is this and this is equal on this line, right? So the long-run equilibrium, short-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand are going to be equal at a level of output that is equal to full employment. Now this can be at any price level. There can be any price level, but the output level has to be here. So this is, this is long-run equilibrium in the macroeconomy. Now, short-run equilibrium can be anywhere this and this are equal. Short-run equilibrium can occur here. Short-run equilibrium can occur here, right? Short-run equilibrium can occur at any price level. Short-run equilibrium does not have to represent an output level that is fully going to fully employ all resources, right? Now, ultimately, this model can be used to explain any economic circumstance. All right, what's happening at the given time, right? You know, what's going on right now? Well, right now we have an economic recession, or probably some level of an economic recovery. But we know the level of output is not sufficient in order to fully employ all resources, right? So we could illustrate that. We could illustrate that, you know, you know, right now we could illustrate that. We could have a circumstance where there's pressure on prices to go up, but output seems to be beyond full employment. We could illustrate that as well. So we could illustrate all of these circumstances that the macroeconomy could potentially be in. Now, most often those illustrations are going to involve some kind of alteration of this. Aggregate demand. Now, aggregate demand aggregate demand is the total sum demand by all buyers, potential buyers of goods and services for the output. So aggregate demand is the total demand. Now, we spent a lot of time talking about that. We said, all right, aggregate demand is the total demand for all goods and services by all um, um, potential purchasers of goods and services in the economy. And we divided those potential purchasers into, into, into four groups. We said, look, aggregate demand is made up of C, which equals consumption. And consumption represents all the consumer spending, the spending that you and I, consumers, do on final production. Right? So you and I buy new automobiles. You and I buy restaurant meals. You and I buy clothing items. This is called consumer spending or consumption. The total value of all that you and I desire to purchase is called consumption, C, Right? And is the biggest and most important part of total spending and total demand. Right? So aggregate demand here is made up of C, right? Right? Plus I, 
which is equal to investment spend.